Hello and welcome to my channel, CC Stardust Reads Children's Stories. I'll be reading a book called Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Book by Lauren Child. So let's jump in. Herb loved storybooks. Although he wasn't a very good reader, it didn't matter because he could tell a lot from the pictures. Herb liked the scary ones best with pictures of dinosaurs gobbling up other dinosaurs or swooping vampires chasing people who had foolishly decided to go for a midnight stroll without any garlic. Herb read his books everywhere. This was why many of the pages were stickily stuck together, soggy round the edges and usually had bits of banana, biscuit and the odd pea squashed between the pages. On this particular night, Herb's friend Ezzy was staying over. Earlier, the two of them had been playing a game involving a great deal of untidying things and by the evening, Herb had trouble even finding his bed. By the time he had, Ezzy was already slightly snoring. So Herb searched around for the book to amuse him until he dozed off. But the only one he managed to find was a book of fairy tales. It hadn't been looked at in a very long time and was quite dusty. It was actually quite exciting, but even so Herb's eyes soon became heavy and before he could close the book, he fell asleep with his head on the page. Herb woke with a start to hear a strange high-pitched shrieking noise. He looked over to see if Ezzy was awake, but there was no sign of him at all. Furthermore, his bed became sort of lumpy and huge, which was funny because Herb had always found his bed to be just right. What are you doing here? How dare you be on this page? I am the star and I say you are not allowed in this story, shrieked the shrieking thing. W -w Where am I? stammered Herb. On my page, screeched the girl. But who are you? asked Herb and not sure that he wanted to know. I, said the little girl somehow, managing to raise her voice even higher. I am Goldilocks, of course, and this is my story. And that's when it dawned on Herb that he had fallen into the book. Herb scrabbled out of bed as fast as he could, scooted down the stairs and went slap, bang, wallop into three differently sized bears. Whoops, I'm so sorry, squeaked Herb, terrified. I didn't mean to be here. Oh, that's quite all right, said the largest bear. It could happen to anyone. And does all the time said the small bear, scowling at Goldilocks. How about some porridge? said the medium-sized bear. You might find it too hot or too cold. I'm afraid we're out of just right. Ahem, <coughs> ahem, <coughs> coughed Goldilocks. In case you pea brains have forgotten, this story is called Goldilocks and the Free Bears, not the little show-off in pyjamas has breakfast. Herb ran for it. He ran past two children living in a house made of ginger biscuits. I wouldn't do that, called Herb. I'll get lost, shouted the children. He ran past a man climbing up what looked like a long plait of hair. Ouch, cried the voice belonging to the hair. And when he saw a cat wearing a feathered hat and high heeled boots, Herb ran a bit faster. Herb ran all the way through the forest. At long last, he came to an enormous door. It was difficult to open because the illustrator had drawn the handle much too high up. But after three attempts at jumping, 
Herb managed to grab it and slowly creak the door open. There seemed to be a party going on. Everyone was dressed up to the nines and dancing in wigs. One by one the dancers noticed Herb and the music ground slowly to a halt. It was so quiet you could hear a pea drop or was it a pin? Well, you could have heard something drop had it not been for the couple in crowns having a furious discussion in loud voices. Where the dickens is that twerp, Prince Charming? Never mind him, where the devil is my throne? Herb couldn't help noticing that the Queen had a moustache drawn on in Byro. And who might you be? demanded the Queen. This is a private royal party. You know, no one in pyjamas is invited. I'm Herb, said Herb. I own this book. Oh, so you're the doodler who ruined my looks, she said, pointing at her moustache. And where's my throne, you, you scissor snipper? It was then that Herb remembered. Last year, when he was much, much younger, he had drawn moustaches and glasses on many of his book characters and added telephones to all the rooms. He had been going through a scribbling phase. He had also cut out the royal throne for a model spaceship that he and Ezzy were making. And he had a horrible feeling that he might be responsible for the disappearance of Prince Charming. As Herb wondered desperately what to do next, he noticed his pencil case lying on the floor. He'd been looking for it for months. It's all right, I can draw you a new throne, he said. Make sure it's got lots of twirly bits, blustered the king. And I wanted gold, of course, ordered the queen. Herb didn't have a gold crayon. It would have to be green. The Queen did not look impressed. Then, finding the razor, Herb started to rub away at the Queen's moustache. Ow! 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 That really hurts! Seize him! She roared. Herb made a dash for it. There wasn't time to get to the door, but by snipping a hole in the palace floor, Herb managed to wriggle through onto the next page. He could hear the Queen shouting, Look, he's at it again! Herb found himself in an oddly arranged room. Who are you, you measly little rodent? Looking up, Herb saw Cinderella's wickedly mean stepmother and her ugly daughters. I'm Herb, called Herb. What are you doing up there? I wonder, are we pretending to be flies? Scoffed the woman. Or could it be that some, some vile good for nothing child tore out our page and put it back upside down? I wonder who would do that? Said Herb, slightly blushing. Probably some hideous little boy snarled the stepmother, fixing Herb with her beady eyes. Now we can't get to the ball and Prince Charming can't fall madly, utterly in love with us. It's so unfair, whined the pudgy sister. He wouldn't look twice at you, snapped the skinny one. Oh, do be quiet, hissed the stepmother. I'm feeling queasy. Just then, the telephone started to ring. Sticking telephones in fairy tales had seemed funny at the time, but Herb could see that they could turn out to be rather a nuisance. Hello? Why, hello, Your Majesty. Yes, as a matter of fact, there is a little pyjamaed boy here. He did what? Oh, he did, did he? Don't worry, I'll deal with the little weasel. 
she said, giving Herb a shriveling look. Oh, and by the way, if you see that nosy Goldilocks brat, tell her to bring a ladder over. So, this is your doing, she screamed, leaping onto her chair. I'm going to make you wish you never opened a book. Herb speedily drew a door on the wall, ran through it and slammed it shut. Come back here, you little horror, she screeched. Herb was in a very dusty kitchen. His feet were sticking to the floor. There were what looked like giant biscuit crumbs stuck all over the place. Sorry about the dirt, said a bedraggled yet pretty girl. Aren't you meant to be at the Royal Ball? asked Herb. Yes, but I had to come home because the prince, achoo, was late and my party dress dissolved into rags and I really looked, achoo, a mess. And then my carriage turned back into a pumpkin, which was sort of embarrassing. Would you like a cup of, achoo, tea? She really was very nice and Herb was beginning to feel extremely guilty because he had just remembered where Prince Charming was. Herb had cut him out to make a birthday card for his mother. If only I could get out of this book, I could find the prince for you, he said. Oh, I know who can help, said Cinderella, picking up her phone. Drat! Absolutely maddening. I was just in the middle of a spell. This had better be important. It's an emergency. Absolutely everybody's after me. You have to help me get out of this book, yelled Herb. Well, let me see. A, are you my fairy godchild? No, you are not. I don't do boys. Only girls' worse luck. B, what do you expect when you go about scribbling and snippering and generally causing mayhem? This is no way to treat a book, you know. And C, jumping into other people's stories really is very rude. But I can't find my way out, pleaded Herb, near his wit's end. All right, all right. Keep your pyjamas on. I suppose I'll have to come to the rescue as always. Now, where did I put my wand? At that moment, the door flew open. (coughs) He's in your kitchen looking for more food. It was the unmistakably ear-piercing voice of Goldilocks. Right behind her was the wicked stepmother and she was not in a pretty mood, having snagged her stockings, climbing a ladder out of the upside down room. What shall I do? flustered Herb. Quick, climb up the text, said the fairy godmother. Herb grabbed hold of the letters and scrabbled up the sentences. Some of the words were a bit weak and the whole lot started to wobble. He's getting away, screamed Goldilocks so loudly that the whole book shook and slipped off the bed, sending Herb falling headlong through the air onto his own bedroom floor. Well, what's happening? squeaked a startled Ezzy, sitting bolt upright in bed. As you can imagine, it all took some explaining. Ezzy and Herb spent the rest of the night putting the storybook back to rights. Rubbing out moustaches, cleaning out crumbs and blowing away dust. The bewildered Prince Charming was prized off the birthday card and Sticky taped back into the ballroom. His dancing would never quite be the same again due to severe leg creasing. It was tempting to leave the wicked stepmother's room upside down, but Herb resisted. However, he just couldn't help drawing a padlock on the three bears' front door 
and Ezzy just couldn't help sticking a wig on Goldilocks. Well, serves her right for being such a meanie. So, the next time Herb opened the book, he saw a little girl standing outside the three bears cottage, desperately trying to open the door. A very cross little girl with mousy brown hair. <laughs> The end. So we can't call Goldilocks Goldilocks anymore. What name should we give her? <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Bye bye for now.